In these videos, we'll be uh, looking at standard combinational components. Uh, these will be circuits that um, <coughs> have no past memory. Uh, the outputs are solely dependent on the current inputs. Uh, we'll be starting with the multiplexer. Uh, the multiplexers are a component that allow us to take multiple inputs and decide which of those inputs we would like to see on the output. We can think of a multiplexer like uh, a junction of railroad tracks. Here we see we have input 1 and input 2 coming in and then based off the current signal would decide which of those outputs we would see on the output, which of those inputs we would see on the output. We're going to start by looking at a 2 to 1 multiplexer, which like our railroad track would have two inputs coming in, um, a signal and an output. We start with the binary possibilities. Uh, each input and the output and the signal each have two possible values in the binary system, a 0 or a 1. We're doing a 2 to 1, so we raise 2 to the power of 1, um, and the 1 representing how many signals we have, and that gives us our, I'm sorry, our, I'm already thinking of the next one, our two inputs. So two inputs, one signal, or two to the one equals two. This will be a base formula that we will use um, to determine, based on the number of inputs, how many um, signal wires do we need or how many signals do we need to switch those inputs. So we see that for two inputs we need one signal. Here we can see a truth table for a 2 to 1 multiplexer. We see that we have uh, one signal column. We have two inputs D1 and D0 and then we have one output column. And so we see a pattern here. If our signal is zero, this is our pattern of outputs. And if our signal is, are ones, this is our pattern of outputs. So we can derive um, a, by a Boolean algebra formula for this. Uh, in this case, we'll look at the sum of the min terms where we have ones. So we can start defining our formula. As y equals, and for our first min term, we have a not s. a not D1, and a D0. Oh, let me make that smaller. And I'm going to move this over just a little bit so I have more real estate. And then for our next min term, we have a not S. A not or a D1 and a D0. And then for our next min term, we have an S, a D1, and a not D0. And then for our last term, we have an S, a D1, and a D0. And you guys can see more on the screen than I can access those guys. Okay, so now we can simplify this um, formula. 
if we take these two elements, we can factor out through distribution, we can factor out a not s and a d0. And that leaves us with a d1 or a, d1, a not d1 or a d1. And then we can do the same thing here. We can factor out the S and the D1. Leaving us with a D, not D0 or a D0. All right, anything um, ORed with the uh, inverse of itself is a one. And so we can factor those out and we end up with the formula not d0 or d1. Here we can demonstrate building this circuit and testing it. I have um, three inputs here, d0, s, and d1. I'm just setting them all to zero. Uh, we have our truth table with our formula. So to build this circuit, we can start with the first gate, not S, D0. So we need an inverter for S. And we're going to be ending that with D0. And then we need to and S with D1. Then by our sum of products, we or the two AND gates together. Can give us our output. All right, so here what we see is right now both of our inputs are zero and we're seeing zero on the output on the output. Now it says that if we not S1, we will get the output of D0. Well, we are notting S1 now. And so right now we see the dark green is a zero, the light green is a one. So we see our zero in S is being inverted going into this AND gate, but we have a zero coming from D0. Uh, and then notice we have zeros coming from both uh, S and D1 here. Um, so if we now make this a one, notice now we have a one with the inverse of zero and this AND gate is now outputting a one instead of a zero into our OR and we get a one on the OUT gate, right? So I can switch this back to a zero and we get a zero OUT. Um, if I put a one here, notice we're still getting a zero because we still have a zero or a NOT S. If I now make that a 1, then we will now see the output of D1 on um, going through this AND gate, and the inverse here turns off this AND gate. So the way we see a multiplexer work is the signal turns on one of the AND gates with the input that we want to display. Whether or not that input is a 0 or a 1, we are seeing that input come through to the output. So that is uh, a combinational circuit, uh, and we can see 
that we can standardize these uh, by representing them now as a component So we're saying that this component here is based on this um, formula. So if signal is a zero, then Y will be whatever is coming in on D zero. If it's a one, then we will see whatever is coming through on D one. And we'll be able to reuse these components to build larger multiplexers. All right, so that finishes the first video. In the next video, we'll look at uh, a larger multiplexer with more inputs.